Hi, good morning. This is Gloria Keith with Action Speaks, and I'm here to continue uh, our readings on history, research, and studies for giftedness. And today I will continue some of the reading of, well, some of the study on Beyond Deficit Thinking, providing access for gifted African American students under representation in gifted education. How did we get here and what needs to change? The author is Michelle Frazier Trotman, January 1, 2002, Roper Review. Menchaca, 1997, made a similar observation. Racial differences in intelligence, it was contended, are most validly explained by racial differences in innate, genetically determined abilities. What emerged from these findings regarding schooling were curricula, modifications, ensuring that the intellectually inferior and the social order would best be served by providing these students concrete, low-level, segregated instructions commensurate with their alleged diminished intelligence intellectual abilities. Let me read that again. What emerged from these findings regarding schooling were curricular modifications ensuring that the intellectually inferior and the social order would best be served by providing these students concrete, low-level, segregated instructions commensurate with their alleged diminished intellectual abilities. Mm. The deficit orientation was recently revived by the publication of The Bell Curve, Hernstein and Maury, 1994. Seeking to influence public and social policy Hermstein and Maury interpreted or misinterpreted and misrepresented their data like those of early of earlier centuries, so as to confirm prejudices. As Gold nineteen eighty one noted, the hereditarian theory of IQ is a homegrown American product that persists persist in current practices of testing, sorting, and discarding. Excuse me. Menchaca, 1997, also traced the evolution of deficit thinking and demonstrated how it influenced segregation in schools, e.g. Pleasy versus Ferguson, 1896, and resistance to desegregation during the civil rights era and today, the civil rights era and today. For instance, some scholars conclude that educators continue to resist desegregation and they use tracking and ability grouping to resegregate students racially, e.g. Oaks, 1985, Slavin, 1987. That is, some educators argue that the underrepresentation of black students in gifted education and their overrepresentation 
and special education relate strongly to efforts to perpetuate school segregation, e.g. Ford and Webb, 1995, Hillard, 1992. In the sessions that follow, we discuss how deficit orientations influence directly and indirectly a myriad of gifted education practices and specifically limits access to gifted education for diverse students. This information pre presents a synopsis critical issues a synopsis of critical issues related to the recruitment and retention of black students in gifted education. The list is far from exhaustive. Instead, it presents an overview of seven major symptoms of deficit thinking. Traditional IQ base definitions, philosophies, and theories of giftedness. That's one. Two, identification practices and policies that have a disproportionately negative impact on black students, e.g. a reliance on teachers, teacher referral for initial screening. Three, a lack of training aimed at helping educators in the area of gifted education. Four, a lack of training aimed at helping teachers understand and interpret standardized test results. Five, inadequate training of teachers and other schools, school personnel in multicultural education. Six, inadequate efforts to communicate with black families and communities about gifted education. And seven, black students' decisions to avoid gifted education programs. That's all we have for you today. Tomorrow, or our next session, we will be reading on testing and assessment issues by the same author, Ms. Trotman. Thank you, and may God bless you. Have a great day. I'm Gloria Keith with Action Speaks.